When it happens now, no doubt he'll be asked about this request from the United States for Australia to expand its military operation in the Middle East to include Syria. Now, to discuss the possible expanded military commitment, I was joined from Sydney by the Parliamentary Secretary for Foreign Affairs, Steve Chobo. Steve Chobo, thanks for coming in today. Let's start with Syria. Now, the US has formally requested that Australia support coalition fighters conducting airstrikes in Syria. Should Australia accept that request? Well, I think we should certainly evaluate it and consider it. Uh, the fact is that we need to work uh, together with the United States and others uh, that are forming part of uh, our efforts to suppress as much as possible uh, Daesh on the ground in Iraq. Now, if military advice is that that should expand to include Syria, then I think it's certainly something that we should consider. What would be the justification for expanding into Syria? Well, I think ultimately these types of decisions need to be decisions that are taken uh, by military commanders. They're not political decisions about whether or not we should commit air support to uh, the warfare against Daesh in Syria. Uh, ultimately, it's got to be about what's going to provide the best bang uh, for the buck, so to speak, uh, for members of the coalition that are doing everything that we can uh, over Iraq. Uh, and potentially over Syria to suppress uh, Daesh's expansion and as much as possible to actually, uh, let's face it, get rid of Daesh. There'd be added complications though. In the past the government has said the legal framework isn't there, the situation in Syria is different to the current involvement in Iraq. So how would you overcome that? Well, look, ultimately, we would need to have a look at all of that. Uh, the fact is, though, that Daesh is on the ground in Syria. Uh, they remain, uh, you know, a murderous regime that's committing atrocities uh, with no respect for existing boundaries. And let's be frank as well. The fact is that in Syria as well, we've seen uh, with the Assad forces uh, some uh, pretty unsavoury people doing some fairly unsavoury things there as well. So uh, it's not clear cut in Syria. Uh, it is uh, complicated, but that notwithstanding, if the military advice that's uh, being put up uh, to the government is that in order to help with our efforts to combat the threat that's arising from Daesh, that we should be involved in airstrikes uh, in Syrian airspace, and I certainly think that's something that Australia should consider. Yes, because as you mentioned, it is complicated and there is no invitation as such from the Syrian government either. Well, and that's why I say we've got to look at this in toto. I mean, I'm certainly not of the view, uh, and I don't believe the government is of the view, that we should be ruling it out. Uh, it's something that we should consider based on the best strategic advice, the best military advice, uh, and the best legal advice about where Australia stands in conjunction with those other partner countries that we're working with uh, in our efforts to suppress Daesh and to, over time, uh, hopefully uh, rid the world of this very evil, very evil caliphate. Do you think this kind of request, this expansion, was inevitable given that it was always going to be difficult just to target the fight in Iraq when the Islamic State has the involvement in Syria as well? Well, look, it's a complicated area. The fact is that uh, the Middle East, Iraq, has been uh, an ongoing uh, sore point in terms of the conflict that's been taking place there now for decades. Um, the simple fact of the matter is that uh, these are not straightforward matters. If they were easy and straightforward, uh, it would have been resolved a long time ago, Julie, but the fact is that we need to do everything that we can uh, to maintain maximum pressure on murderous regimes like Daesh. Uh, we know that they're doing what they can uh, to provide support to terrorist organisations and to terrorists. We know that as an organisation, uh, it's very well funded and obviously there's been a lot of reports that they are literally uh, sitting on uh, billions of dollars potentially. So this is a very bad regime and it's absolutely incumbent upon Australia and indeed other partner countries around the world to do everything we can to remove these people in this regime from the planet. Well, let's talk about domestic issues now and the week in politics. And a week where the government's been beset by talks about leaking. We saw the Prime Minister read the Riot Act to Cabinet Ministers. And then just after that, we saw the day's talking points leaked. Uh, that was pretty embarrassing, wasn't it, for the government? You know, the, uh, the big revelation about the to talking points are, uh, as I've said previously, I mean, it's basically a summary of the day's news, uh, a summary of the issues that are running, and it's a widely distributed and circulated uh, list of points. The Labor Party does it, the Greens do it, the Coalition does it. Um, I really don't think, actually, it's that big a deal. Uh, the fact is that 
obviously there are some forces uh, within uh, the government that seem to be hell-bent on frustrating the government's message and seem to be hell-bent on not actually focusing on the tasks that we're elected to do. But the Prime Minister, uh, the ministers, the government, the backbench, we are focused on making sure that we do what we are elected to do, and that's to restore our nation's finances, uh, to stop the reckless spending, to, of course, focus on creating jobs for people and uh, a strong plan for a stronger economy. If there are forces, as you just referred to, Steve Chobo, that are leaking against the Prime Minister, as you said, doesn't that show that you've got some big problems problems there internally and that there's a disrespect for the Prime Minister? Look, ultimately uh, there are some that are frustrating the government's efforts, as I've said. I'm not going to pretend there's not. Uh, but the fundamentals are that as a government uh, we're elected to do a job. We are focused on doing that job. The Prime Minister, uh, the executive and the backbench are all focused on the tasks that we're elected to do. Uh, what I want to speak about is uh, what we're doing in terms of rolling out our plan to support, for example, our $5.5 billion small business package. We know that that's going to help to drive the small business sector. We've seen that job creation under this government is running at three or four times the rate it was under the Labor Party. We've seen that uh, there's been more than 300 100,000 jobs created in the first two years of this government versus the Labor Party, which actually presided over a reduction of 200,000 jobs. So they're the things that I'm focused on. And I actually don't get too worked up about one or two people that are doing silly things because, you know what, every government has it, whether it's coalition, Labor, they all unfortunately have one or two people uh, that are a bit rogue but the rest of us are focused on the main game. But as you said there, you want to talk about jobs, you talked about the things that you're focused on, but that message is being sure. distracted, isn't it, by these rogues, as you put it? Well, I'm not getting distracted by this, Julie. <laughs> I'm, I'm very focused on the tasks that we've got to do. Um, as I said, we've got a good news story about how the Australian economy is going. We've got a good news story about the jobs that are being created. Uh, we've got good news in terms of the economic plans that we've got and the rollout of uh, a lot of successful programs now under the Coalition. Uh, we're going to continue doing that. But is it uh, going, going to keep going being to hard distracted. to get that message through, though, Steve Chobo, if these leaks keep coming? Well, I mean, you're asking me to predict what will happen in the future and I can't do that. All I can do, uh, as a member of the government, uh, as someone who was elected and charged with the responsibility on behalf of Australians to make our nation a better place, all I can do, day in, day out, is work towards that goal and that outcome. Um, and that's precisely what we're doing. I mean, whether it's in terms of our national security that we're focused on and the extra resources that we've provided to make sure that we minimise as much as possible uh, the threat against Australians, or whether it's this government's very bold vision to, to make sure that we've got strong strategic defence um, capability in terms of our submarines and in terms of our shipbuilding, uh, or whether it's the plans that we have to grow the economy that have seen uh, the job creation rate in Australia uh, growing much more quickly than it is in the United States, the United Kingdom or Canada, for example. All right, Steve Chabber, we're out of time. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much.